In this video, I will demonstrate how to revive an NX console using the latest Level 3 Unbreak Guide along with new tools like Prodify and Nanfix. Let's get started. This guide is intended for those who have lost their console's NAND and don't have any older backups or MUMMC, as well as for those who use a blank NAND chip. Please do not use this guide for any other situations. It is specifically for those who have severely damaged the NAND. By following this guide, you are taking full responsibility for any and all consequences. Back to the symptoms. This console lacks any EMMC partitions, with the status showing that the partition table is empty. The typical EMMC information should look like this. If you have lost the console's EMMC partitions, it is important to approach the situation critically. If you have an older NAND backup or an MUMMC setup, you can easily revive your console and should not follow the instructions in this video guide. If you have lost the EMMC partitions, you might encounter a purple screen when attempting to load the OFW, and you may encounter a blank screen. When trying to load the SysMMC CFW, you might come across this error message. If you are experiencing these symptoms, it is best to consult a professional before taking any action. These are the required components and tools to follow this guide. You can see the same list in the description below. Even if your console's name is damaged, your console should be able to boot to Hecate. Now we need to see the console type. Click Console Info, then select HW and Fuses. Take a look at this section. If your console is a V1, whether patch or unpatch, the code name is Arista. If your console is a V2, Light or OLED, the code name is Mariko. We will now extract the boot 0 and the boot 1. These data are not needed for the restoration process. However, we need to perform this step in order for Hecate to create a backup and restore folder on the SD card. Click Tools, then select Backup EMMC. Then select EMMC Boot 0 and Boot 1. Then close the page. Now get into the Tools page, then click USB Tools. Get a USB Type-C cable and connect the console to a Windows PC. Then disable the read-only option. And then choose SD card. With the Hecate USB tools, we can perform file operations on the SD card without having to remove it from the console. On this screen, my console's SD card is mounted as Drive H. Make sure to install the latest headspec by extracting the new one to the SD card. Replace the existing files if prompted. Navigate to the switch folder on the SD card and open the donor NAND pack. Ensure you have downloaded the 32GB pack if your console is a V1, V2, or Lite. Mine is OLED, so I'm using the 64GB pack. Drag the donor prodinfo.bin and the donor.kiss file to the switch folder. Then safely remove the mounted SD card drive by selecting eject UMS. You can disconnect the USB cable for now, then press close. Get into the Hecate home screen, then select Payloads. Select Lockpick RCM. Select them from SysNAN and press the power button to proceed. Press any button to continue. Move the cursor with the volume button, then select Payloads. Select ProInfo Gen. On this screen, select Build ProInfo from Donor. Again, press any button to continue, then select Reboot to Hecate. Now reconnect the console to the computer using the USB Type-C cable and again do the SD card USB transfer.
Before running any programs, it is essential to install the .NET Desktop Runtime 702. You can find the link in the description below and follow the on-screen instructions. After running the Prodinfo gen payload, it generated a file named generated Prodinfo file from Danner.bin, which can be found inside the switch folder. This generated Prodinfo is essentially fake, as it doesn't come from the original manufacturer. As a result, the console is essentially in the state similar of being banned, because it will never be able to connect to the manufacturer's servers again unless you obtain the original Prodinfo and the console is not yet banned from their server. For your information, the original Prodinfo is stored inside the console's NAND. As we no longer have access to the console's NAND, the only way to revive this console is by using the fake Prodinfo generated by the Prodinfo gen payload. The fake Prodinfo itself is not 100% perfect, but it definitely helps people revive their damaged console. Now, I want to show you something that most of us are not aware of. Let's open the Prodify app. Click load Prodinfo and select the generated Prodinfo from donor.bin. As you can see, the generated Prodinfo has a strange color scheme, a yellow body, and a dark blue bezel. You can see these colors on the controller's menu on the home screen. You can also change the default console serial number to match the label on the console body if you wish. But it will not unban the console as this is purely cosmetic. By using Prodify, we can fix this and achieve a better cosmetic appearance for our console. Let's make a few changes. I will input my console serial number here, and I would like the main body and the bezel to be black. Then click Update Prodinfo. We can now close the Prodify app. Now extract the donor raw NAND .bin from the donor NAND pack. It should be in the same folder as the NAND fix app. and then extract the firmware pack into a folder. Now run the NANDFIX app. First, select your console type. Mine is OLED, so I chose Mariko. And then select the prod.gis file. It is located inside the switch folder on the SD card. Then select the firmware folder we just extracted earlier. Next, select the donor raw nand.bin file. Remember, this file should be in the same location as the NAND fix app. Now select the donor.keys file. It is located inside the switch folder of the SD card. And finally, select the fake prodinfo file. If you try to open or select it, the NAND fix will pop an error message. To fix this intended warning message, we need to rename the file to prodinfo or prodinfo.bin or prodinfo.dec. If you were doing the level 2 unbreak method, you need to select the original Prodinfo from the console. Now we have filled all the text fields. The next step is to generate the NAND files, so click the Generate button. If everything is correct, you will notice a newly generated folder in the same location as the NAND fix app. Next, click the group to extract all the required NAND partition from the donor raw NAND.bin using the donor.keys file. This process will take some time to complete and it will generate several files in the same directory as the NAND fix app. Press OK to continue, then click Encrypt. This process will encrypt all the decrypted NAND partitions using the console's prod.keys file. Press OK to continue. Lastly, click Build to compile all the encrypted NAND partitions into a single, new raw NAND.bin file. Press OK to continue and then you can close the NAND fix app. After successfully performing the NAND fix operation, you will find the raw NAND.bin file in the NAND files folder.
And now extract the NX9 Manager GUI version into a folder and run it. Click File, Open File, then select the Ronan.bin. This section wouldn't exist if the NX9 Manager didn't have bugs when mounting the NAND partition. Now click Options, then select Configure Key Set, then select the Prod.kiss file that is inside the Switch folder on the SD card. Click More Info, and you can see that your console's serial number is restored. I want to remind you once again that restoring the console's serial number will not unbend your console. It is purely cosmetic. You can now close the Properties window. Now, we need to restore the NAND partitions manually. Right-click the BCPKG21 Normal Main, then select Restore from File. Get into the generated NAND files folder and select the corresponding file. Do the same procedure for all BCPKG2 partitions. Now, right-click the system partition and format it. Do the same procedure for the user partition. Format it. And now, right-click the system partition, then select Mount. Make sure the read-only option is not checked, then select Mount. If you are prompted to install the Dokkan driver, please do so. Now you can mount the system partition. Open the generated NAND files folder and place it next to the mounted system partition. Open the system folder on the generated NAND files folder. Please follow the steps in the video precisely. Drag the save folder and drop it to the mounted system partition. Now drag the contents folder and drag it into the mounted system partition. If you encounter an error while following these steps, please reopen the NX9 Manager and repeat the process. Close the windows and unmount the system partition. And now reopen the ronn.bin. You can now see that the firmware version of the NAND has been updated to the latest one and the console serial number is intact. You may close the NX9 Manager. Open the backup folder inside the SD card, enter the alphanumeric folder, and get into the Restore folder. Drag and drop the boot 0 and the boot 1 from the generated NAND files folder into the Restore folder. Then you need to remove the file extension from the boot files. Safely remove the mounted drive from the computer. Get back to the Hecate screen, then press close. Now click EMMC RAW GPP. And then run Rovos. Ensure that the target or the device is the mounted EMMC RAW GPP. Mine is OLED, so it is a 64GB drive. For the boot selection, leave it as disk or ISO image. Now click select and choose the raw nand.bin file. Modify the file selection as all files and select the raw nand.bin. Then press the start button. Make sure you have selected the correct drive, then press OK to proceed. This process will take some time to complete, but we don't need to wait until it reaches 100%. 20% is more than enough. As soon as it reaches about 20%, you can terminate the process.
back to Hecate. Now you can remove the USB cable from the console. Press close and close the page, then select Restore eMMC. Select eMMC Boot 0 and Boot 1. Press the power button to restore the boot files and ignore all warnings. On the Hecate home screen, select the reboot button, then choose OFW. If you have followed the procedure carefully and accurately, you will be able to boot the console. Please complete the initial setup, but do not set up the network or attempt to connect the console to the internet, or you will encounter an error. And if you are prompted to delete the SD card content, please do so. Now let's try running the semi-stock which is close to the OFW. Click the controller icon and you can see that the main and the bezel color are black. If you didn't use the Prodify app, then you will see something like this. And now let's get into the system settings and see the console serial number. And if you didn't use the Prodify app, then the default serial number is a string of zeros. Now I will show you that connecting the console to the internet when running the OFW or semi-stock using a fake prodinfo will result an error. This is the expected behavior, and the issue can only be resolved by running the CFW environment or using the original prodinfo. And now let's try running the SysMMC CFW. And let's connect the console to the internet. No error whatsoever. And to sync the time, we can open the quick NTP via the Tesla menu. That's it, you have fixed the console. However, the OFW and semi-stock are essentially useless, even though you have restored the console serial number, as they are merely cosmetic features. Thank you for watching the video, and see you next time.